turbo car. Derek Ward. Mercedes Outlaw Pro Mod champion. They are still investigating the back of the supercharger. I'm sure they're 100% happy with how Derek Ward's car is currently performing. This would be Derek Ward's first run in three attempts, trying to bump his way in to the 32 car field, as is Todd Moyer. With the turbocharged machine in the right lane. Wow, Derek Ward's car aggressive, sets the front end down. 368, 206 miles per hour, and Derek Ward bumps his way into the show, a 368 with a two at 206 miles per hour, not just in, but to the top half of the field at the number 12 spot. An impressive squirt down the left lane for Derek Ward. Todd Moyer had to get out of it there with a pedal, goes 406 at 204 miles per hour, and that is not good enough to get in. In fact, it is just on the precipice of being bumped out of the Chicago-style 16-car event. That happens on the back end of the 32 car field. And here comes John Vergatz in the Dark Knight and Manny Bajinga. The outlaw small tire grudge racer out of Massachusetts. Don O'Neill. Don O'Neill going to join us up here in the booth for session number two. I take it you've. Uh... Oh man, hard work. You know, Courtney, my back still hurts carrying her around. <laughs> Let's talk all about Manny. Manny last week was on radials. He was doing pretty good. This week, he's on big tires and he's struggling a little bit. And there's a correlation there? Yeah, just a little bit. And he's very open about it. With with Patrick, Jason, the whole team, PTP. But I'll tell you who's not struggling. Forgots. Northeastern guy always shows up over at Norwalk. Does the whole quick eight deal. And get those struggling. Labor at 277 at 196 miles per hour. So that's not going to be good enough to get for Godson. Manny Bajinga goes 604. Nearly identical run to his first shot down the racetrack. Manny sits 60th right now. For Gotts is 41st. Everybody's chasing Mark Mickey at 364 with a two if you want to be number one. Well, right now, let's not insult everybody at home that's watching. It's hot. Yeah. Right? And so track temp, traction control, it's a big struggle. Now, Mark Mickey did call his shot at the top end. Said he's gonna go 56 today. We only got two rounds left. How about that? I think tonight's probably when that happens. They went 58, I think, yes. So they say. You know, when it comes to <laughs> we had, we lying. Had the clock shut off yesterday. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Now, how about Stan Schultz? He's over there bringing up the rear for Colt Lumber. Stan Shelton is uh, Kevin Rivenbark's teammate, and that's what Don's alluding to. They, they ran each other in the first session, which I don't think was you know, intentionally. And Kevin Rivenbark made a great run with Stan's son tuning the car. And Stan with Lee White tuning the car did not. Well, here comes one of the nine nitrous cars. PDRA, Marcos, Button. Come top 
Vacaville, North Carolina. Got that accent down pretty good. I should. I'm from North Carolina. A couple of North Carolina natives here, Stan Shelton, Colt Lumber. Shelton Insurance, real estate. Mustang in the right lane. Andrew Butner. Nitrous Camaro on the left. Shelton out of it early. Butner puts the front end down. And goes 372 at 201 miles per hour. You can see Butner really soft up front compared to some of the other nitrous runs. Just to get her on down. For Butner, he goes to number 30 spot. That's good enough to bump his way in for now. The chances of him still being in at the end of tonight with that, probably not very good, but it's a good baseline going into the final session. So the next pair get ready to go with Melanie oh. Salemi. Oh, how about Matt Melanie? Deitch. Oh, come on, gal. Tyler Crosno and I were talking about it in qualifying session number one, and he was nice enough to join us up here. And Melanie Salemi was like bitten by the bad luck snake at this event last year during qualifying, and then came out in the second chance race and steamrolled everybody for the $10,000, and then in testing this week. Looked pretty good. Came out here in the first session. And again, ran into trouble. I think she's a fan of qualifying. Episode. Well, they tested for a week, two weeks ago, with us. Down here. We had the KPR umbrella. And John and Mellon and the crew were smiles. Derek Ward was not. Now, Derek, Derek Ward's smiling today. Derek Ward is definitely <laughs> smiling today. Melanie Salemi, her husband John, that team out of New York. The Ali Camaro supercharged machine. Matt Deitch, also out of New York. That's the nitrous Camaro over on the right side of the racetrack. Matt had issues in the first session, didn't make a hit. Melanie squared the tire up right away. Did, did Melanie get the, the motivational pump from West Buck down there? Melanie came around the corner at the top end, and I caught her passenger door. And I said, hey, Mel, probably help if you keep the door shut. She said, it probably help, but I didn't shake the tires. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me that she would probably help him shut up. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> the whole meme and real. I've got to get down and talk to Deesh. I believe that is Stevie Fast Jackson's old nitrous car. And it looks like it. Wouldn't you know that? I need to go see. Don't you manage Stevie Fast Jackson's racing operation? Well, that car is from what? Ten years ago? When he had the nitrous pictures of it on the Oh, Melanie. look what at Melanie go. She holds going to it. 368-202. Melanie Salemi with a driving job for the record books on that one. Did not take her foot out of it. Rode the wheelie bar of 400 feet and goes to number 12 and a 3.681 at 202 miles per hour for Melanie Salemi is going to put her for now comfortably into the show for Matt Deitch, a 406 at 204. Good news, got down the track. Bad news, nowhere near what you're going to need to run to get into this race. Well, the whole deal, Melanie's 956 up front. And I'm going to tell you, that was on the rear tires. 246 in the middle for a 330 time. She was rolling. Car carried the front end for a long time. Uh, a minute or so. 
All right, let's talk about Robert Cox. Robert Cox and those guys have had the engine in and out of the car three times, and it's only Friday. That's not good. You want to know it's funny? Not funny. Not funny, ha-ha, but maybe funny, hee-hee. Robert Cox had a solid Procharger program. Off-season, switched to a screw. Justin Elks, the team. Do you see who's behind Robert Cox's car? Little KB history, Jeff Perry. Justin Elks brought Jeff in. Jeff's going to be overseeing Rob Cox's eighth mile program this year. And uh, that's, a, that's a good guy to have in your corner. Meanwhile, Robert Abbott's over on the right side of the racetrack. The old Tuttero cars over there. I always love Mr. Abbott because he calls it Mr. Wonderful Motorsports. Mr. Early Motorsports on this run. Robert Cox goes 375 to at 203 miles per hour. Robert Abbott's run looked really nice. The problem is he left before the tree activated. No time for the Florida native. So Robert Abbott makes a good run but they're gonna have to rely on what the computer tells them for what it actually ran. And he's gonna come back tonight, early in the session. Indeed, early. And uh, I always love it when the crickets, the peanut gallery gives you information when they're watching. Mm -hmm. That is Johnny Camp's old nitrous car, not Steve. Well, thank you to whoever corrected. Well, I don't want to give that guy too much credit on passing along information because he's head really big. Well, you know, just have I know how big your head is. So. Oh, but don't bump. How about old Nick Janik with the clutch? Only clutch car here this week. Only one. Redline Oil Corvette. He basically took his top alcohol funny car, drivetrain, and dropped it in the front of a Corvette in the middle of last year. He said, you know what? I'm really tired of the body closing on me, so instead I want to get in through the door. Well, Nick told me that he'd rather quit racing than get rid of the clutch. So, I think it's pretty safe to say, if you see Nick Jennick, there'll be a clutch. Dustin Nesloni over here on the left side. Star of the Midwest Drag Racing League, one pro Texas, one champion. A lot of different cars at the gunfight this year. Did you tell everybody out there in TV land about Taylor and Nick that just got recently got married? You, know you just told them. Okay. Just ask me. They did. They just happened to be listening to people. Oh. TV. Yes. Taylor and Nick just recently got married. Just recently. Like got less married. than a month ago. Yes, very much so. Yep. Taylor's competing in top drags for this weekend as his Nick's daughter, Peyton. Squatted down behind the right rear of the car right there. Nick Janik, clutch Corvette, red line oil. Dustin Nesloni, Texas. Whoa. Nick's in trouble. Dustin Nesloni's not. 369 with the four, 204 miles per hour. And in the heat of the day, I feel like it's a pretty good run for Dustin Nesloni, who had issues in the first session, couldn't get it down the track. A 369 with a four at 204 is good enough to put him into the number 20 spot for now. Now, does that tell you how tight we are? You just saw Melanie so far. She basically went low for the round to this point. She's 68-1, and Dustin's 69 is kind of like, eh. And they're nine spots apart on the parachute. Well, you know, we talked about it in the first session when Johnny Camp came up here because he was. I put mufflers on that car. <laughs> when Johnny Camp came up here in the first session, we were talking about it because last year he was the number one qualifier. Number two last year through 32 were separated by less than 400 of a second. 35,000, second to 32nd. Yep. Now Johnny put 200s on the field. Well, that was then and this is now. And we do have, I mean, you're talking about 66 of the nastiest eight and quarter mile power adder talented group in the country we brought them all you got nhra you got ihra or i'm sorry pdra I, I mean, midwest. nca midwest 
Northeast. Northeast. Jason Lee was supposed to be in the other lane here, Don, and got pushed off after trying to start that coast packing machine. So I'm not sure what happened to the number two car out of the coast packing camp. Eric Gustafson still to come in this session. But Jason Lee, an HRA national event winner a year ago, on the outside looking in, going into Q3 tonight. And again, this is qualifying session number two, if you're just tuning in to flow. At about the time that you expected qualifying number one, we did run an early session today to try to get ahead of potential weather tomorrow. That does not change the Saturday schedule. They effectively added a qualifying session to the weekend. And Mike Decker Jr. will try to put his way into the field of 32. The half track wheel stand in a 366 at 206 miles per hour. And not only does Mike Decker Jr. put himself into the show, Mike Decker Jr firmly supplants himself as a contender for the $100,000 that are on the line here at the Drag Illustrated World Series of Pro Mod as he goes to the number eight position. Mike Decker Jr. fires one down there and goes to number eight. Yeah, that is uh, that was impressive, very much so. Which the Decker group had a good showing at US Street. They have been doing well when they come to break. Now, who would have known that Spencer Hyde would not have made it down during the queue? Well, everybody could be watching. Well, now, before that, it's um, I'm the last When you know, we do the pairings up, and you get those guys, the you know, 16 last 16 guys to go down the racetrack, and that's your talent. And Mark Mickey, and then you had. Todd Tuttero, you had Jim Halsey, you had guys that were going to man, we're sitting back there, we watch 28 cars go down the lane, you know, knocking off the tires and not making it down. And when they go down, you didn't naturally expect the World Series Pro Mod to finish the champ to go down. He came around the corner and he shoots, he's still back. The Jack and the Green stop. 69 Camaro, Mark Savage tuned machine for Spencer High. A year ago, came from the 32nd and final spot to win the $100,000 the Drag Illustrated World Series of Pro Mod. J.R. Gray, meanwhile, and the Gray contracting team, part of the Alanabi performance group over there now. Mike Janis Superchargers, Mike Janis Toon Camaro, did not get down the track in the first session. J.R. had nightmares about this event a year ago. The car went down the track once in qualifying, including a uh, much hyped and after the fact, much maligned grudge match with Lyle Barnett. I'm beginning to think J.R. Gray didn't like Bradenton. I don't know why he could the car. Not going to like it now. Spencer High, 366, 206 miles per hour, and you're defending World Series of Pro Mod champion puts himself solidly into the top eight of this field. 366.5 and on speed, Spencer Hyde goes to the number seven spot. J.R. Gray looked like it was running pretty good, but he had to lift out of it just before half track. That thing had the front end up and was making a move over towards the center line. Yeah, J.R. made it cleanly past the 330. Just didn't get, just didn't get it all the way through. Hey, Bruce. Chris right. Klein and Mike Bowman, speaking of World Series of Pro Mod Champions, the first man to hold the belt sits in the right lane. And he also didn't make it down. I mean, we're starting to get here, you know, obviously you start watching the numbers up here on the screen. You're getting the cars that did not make it down, and now they're starting to make it down. That's 66 right there in the heat. Impressive. Chris Klein, meanwhile, over on the left side of the racetrack. One of the more unique race cars here at the World Series of Pro Mod. A 58 Fury with a Brad on it. Mike Bowman with that Pro Charge machine. Over on the right side, Moak Hills, California. Yeah, Christine is a fan favorite. 
fun fact, I helped blow sand out of the original Christie and it ran off in the sand trap at Kilcare Raceway back when I was a kid, when it was Robbie Vandergriff, Charlie Carpenter. Mike Bowman goes 371 at only 198 miles per hour, and I thought he might have the laundry out of smidge early there. 385-4, 196 for Chris Klein. So Chris Klein's car just didn't make the power it needed to make. Mike Bowman goes 371. Mike, you want the good news or the bad news? The good news? You're in for now. The bad news? There's not a chance in the world you're going to be in by the time we're done today. No, absolutely. But I'll tell you, Mike Bowman, 249 in the middle. And Chris Klein, he just he just did not have the power. He, he said it best based off that. 260, he can't. Not in the middle. Here's the next pair. It'll be Alex Laughlin and Scott Lang. By the way, watching you try to navigate the iPad is... Uh, I am telling you right now, I'm a numbers person, and I want to look, uh -huh. and this iPad is not my friend. Why? And so, is this your iPad? Yeah. It is? Yeah. Okay, so me throwing it out the tower is out of the question. I live Courtney will reimburse me. Well. Yeah, first off, can I just show you, there's nothing wrong with the iPad. Okay, there's on. an issue with the user. That's, that's not our last run. That's not our last run? Nope. You want to bet? That right there. Okay, when did that come up? It was up literally when you just said that's not the last one. Mike Levy, you're going to see a <laughs> charge on my expense account for just throwing an iPad out the window. Just just FYI, close just circuit. <laughs> How about Scott just Lang? Just I'm going to change the subject. Pro mod, Don. Yes, thank you. Hey, Scott Lang, he was on fire during the Snowbirds. Then he cooled off during U.S. Street, and he said he's trying to get it back. It's a big group over there. Got Kyle Pettis. I mean, you, you, oh, it's a good group, good solid group out of Charlotte. I don't know if anybody knows this. Uh, who's this? What's this guy over here? Uh, the, what's his name? Uh, uh, Alex. Alex. What? Alex. What? Walker. Walker. I I feel like I should know. Him. Yeah. Like, what does he do? Um, what doesn't he do? I don't know. I know, I know that one guy. His name is Frankie Madman Taylor. Frankie Taylor tuning Alex Laughlin's machine. The Baby Blues over on the left lane. How, you, you go 376, Alex Laughlin, mm -hmm. and you're number 47. 47. Welcome to the World Series of Pro. He thought driving a funny car was tough. I guess. I mean. on the right side of the racetrack. 376.5, though, for Scott Lang. It actually didn't run as good as it looked early on. Alex Laughlin's car was soft from the get-go. 972 to 60 feet. He goes 376 at 199 miles per hour. So, Don, we've got to teach you this here. So how this works is, okay, how this works is the run that happens will pop up. I'm Are you happy. sure? I'm positive. Have you seen it happen? Yeah, it, it happened the entire time until you started touching it. Until I started touching it. All right, well, I've been told to stop touching things from time to time. All right, here comes that guy from Florida, Justin Swanstrom. Justin Swanstrom started this session on the bump. He's now 40th with a 373. Of course, Just Justin like Swanstrom, uh, Bill Prep Kings fame. Got a massive social media presence and following. Post some great videos. If you're ever interested in what it looks like to drive one of these cars from the inside, he's uh, not afraid to give you a first hand look at it. Getting some help from Marty Robertson and the folks at Type A Motorsports here this weekend. And Mike Dimenico over there on the right side of the racetrack was the first car down the track in qualifying. That's got to be an uneasy feeling. Well, yeah. Unless but also, it could, be, it could be building. You're building. That, okay, hold on. These guys are professionals. They've made enough laps across the country, multiple weather conditions, to be able to roll out of the trailer, come to the starting line, and unkey and go to the strike. Look at that bump spot. 
371-3. And this is halfway through Q2. So, Noonan Power over there on the McFarland side. Don't really know who's building. Oh, I guess Noonan over here on, on Swanstrom as well. It says it. Yeah. it. says it right there. Right, Courtney? Yeah. Right. It, says it, it says it right there. Oh! Whoa. Hang on. Medical way over by the wall on those 374-203. Hung with it. 374-203 is a good run for Mike. It's not good enough to bump his way in right now. Justin Swanstrom went for a little bit of a ride and had to get out of it. Well, there's plenty of room, real estate on the side of Swanstrom's car. He needs a dentist after that time. Look at the out there. Door almost open. Lee and Tommy Franklin coming up next. Look at that conversation going on right there. Brandon Pez and Luis Delon. Luis got a screw blower for his radio car. Now he's all cool. Because <laughs> Luis wasn't cool before? <laughs> No, I think the fuel tech guys are pretty cool. Well, you want to know what I think is pretty cool? Side by side, micro spawn. Billy Albert, Tommy Franklin. I have a feeling these guys know each other. <laughs> Just one out of one. Not the first time they've lined up next to each other. Billy Albert, the engine builder over here, Tommy Franklin is not backing up. Crazy. Just give him a second. At this point, we've given him a lot. Hold on. Yeah, maybe now. the crew. And it sounds. It sounds like he's whacking the throttle out there. Yep. Nope. You can't get. No. Nope. There we go. There we go. Come on. Going forward. That's exactly what he's doing. So it will not go into reverse. He's trying to, trying to bring it over. Yeah. Nope. Go. Yeah. And there goes your experience. He's going to zip off the end of the racetrack. Will not hold up, Billy. And Tommy Franklin, not just a racer, not just a racetrack owner, but a series owner. So he's probably doing all those things in his head. And he's probably doing some other things in his head right now. <laughs> okay, let's let's not let's not sugarcoat it. Tom yeah. Hinn, <laughs> now he ran a 378 Amber, in the first run, and Judy. he was out of it awfully early. So that's going to be a tough break for the defending Pro Nitrous champion out of the PDRA. His series, Tommy Franklin, who's going to have to come back tonight now to see what he can put together. Now, Tommy's part of Rivals Night, so their run order tonight is pre-scheduled. Anybody not part of Rivals Night runs ahead of the Rivals in reverse order of qualifying right. sheet. But everybody else on Rivals Night is pre-scheduled, which could play into Tommy's advantage here. Here comes Billy Albert. Three seventy four two zero one, Slowed down seven thousandths of a second. Not going to be good enough for Billy right now. Billy said at the top end he was just struggling, just behind. And Jason Collins said it best. I mean, a lot of these guys rolled in here on Saturday or Sunday and started testing. And most of them have had eight to ten runs before the session or before the event started. So Hologies. Tricky Ricky. I'm telling you. Apollo, U.S. Street, he had me laughing so hard. He said, I only race a few times a year. I brought three engines, and I'll go home with three boxes. <laughs> the, the thing is, is I don't think the Salemi group actually wants that. <laughs> right. right. Right, yes. And Apollo, who's working with John and the folks down there on that race car, he is currently just on the outside in 37th spot at a 3.733. The bump right now sits at the 371. Tricky Ricky at 375 is plenty on the outside looking in. Parkway Ford, SoCal Mustang in North Carolina. The king of the world, Tricky Ricky Smith. Purge of the nitrous. In Apollo in a car they call Black Betty. I think we should cue up the music every time he comes up. Oh, Black Betty. If the DJ below is just paying attention, be playing. I say Ricky goes 71 here. I think he's playing chess with everybody. I'm not in the prediction making business. I know. 
By the way, you try to one stay on. Barely get him in. You try to stay on the fence. You're from California. I'm from, I'm from the east side of the Mississippi. We bet on <laughs> birds flying off the fence pole. I bet on the NFL. Oh, Paulo! <laughs> Ricky Ricky 376 201. We should have bet on that one. 3.768 201 for Ricky Smith, and that nitrous entry has uh, just kind of struggled here so far. Paulo, meanwhile, had a really, really nice view of the grandstands <laughs> at about 200 feet and decided it was a good time to lift. I uh, see those guys down there on the golf cart on the fence. They started backing up. I don't know. <laughs> guys in the golf cart were looking at the racetrack going, wow. He's getting really close. <laughs> <laughs> what type of gear is in that thing? <laughs> Why is Paulo waving at? <laughs> oh, this is a black good. mamba. Look, look. These on. these guys get together and eat Shoney's on a regular basis. <laughs> Here me. comes Keith Haney. The nitrous machine they call a black mamba. And Chuck Parker, or as you know him, Chuck 55. I think it's really interesting that Cole Pez, this is Cole's car. I think that's really exciting. Young man, 30 under 30, getting ready to do some big things. The grapevine, the porta john, the truck stop bathroom stalls. Got a lot going on from young Mr. Cole. Cole Pez, the son of Brandon, who's standing next to that race car right now. And if you weren't with us in qualifying session number one, Brandon Pez was entered in this event in the PJS machine, broke the frame rail in that race car last night, unable to fix it. So he has withdrawn from the World Series of Pro Mod and turned his attention to people running race cars with his power, including this car that Chuck 55 is in, the son's machine. Brandon actually did some testing in this race car a couple of weeks ago, had it running pretty good. Keith Haney, purging the nitrous on the Mamba. So are you trying to tell me that we couldn't like just go to the local hardware store and get some light? I think they tried. I mean, just throw it on in there. Weld her up, put a little lean in it, a little rear steer, and send it. If you don't think no? Brandon Pez tried to figure out something. Oh, let me tell you. Those guys got zero quit. Zero. All right, let's see. Two boys from Oklahoma came all the way to Florida. Chuck move over the center line. Back. 367 at 205. Wow. Look at the high fives on the starting line from that crew. Brandon Pez and the team are stoked about that run for Chuck 55. Puts him into the number 12 spot at a 367.5 and 205 miles per hour. Keith Haney went 372, 203. Really nice run, Keith. Four spots out of the field. Well, Keith at least had a good seat to watch Chuck go 67. <laughs> nice job, definitely, for Cole and the whole entire team. Chuck was wheeling her out there. She was drifting over there towards the center line, finally got the front end down. <laughs> Mr. Raymond Matos. Native of Puerto Rico. Chad Green, the Texan. On the other side of the racetrack, Raymond Matos. Part of Rivals Night tonight, and looking forward to that matchup. He is currently in with a 3.709, but the bump is a 371 with a three. Chad Green, the nitrous machine, on the outside looking in. Mean Dean Marina's tuned race car. Dean who's turned himself into a quite the tuner of a nitro funny car these days as well. Turns Isn't out if you know how to make a race car go fast, you know how to make a race car go fast. And you know, that that Dean guy, he can actually drive too. Uh, rumor has it, rumor has it he's not that. Yeah, he's got a few trophies hanging around. They're, they're lingering, if you will. He's laughed that his nickname is Mean Dean. He's like the nicest guy. Who's that? Dean Marinas. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's a great guy. If you're traveling around. I mean, I've never been on his bad side, so I guess I, well, <laughs> I guess I don't know what the Mean Dean part comes from. I hear he talks a good game when it comes to grudge racing. Uh, you know, he talks a good game when it comes to funny car racing, I'll tell you that. You think uh, Matos and Green have ever hung out together? Feels unlikely. Uh, I mean, the Puerto Rico and Texas. I think there's a serious language barrier.
Side by side runs in the 370 range. A 3.703 for Matos improves by 6,000. Chad Green goes 3.795 at 200 miles per hour and goes the wrong direction. So that team's going to have some work to do as they get ready for qualifying session number three tonight. Try to figure out why that car slowed down five hundredths of a second. Raymond Matos improved six thousandths of a second, and it's good for a couple of spots. Now you do this for a living. Like somebody deposits money in your bank on a weekly basis because you're a manager, right? Who you got? Like you're pretty, you're pretty good. Uh, you got a few resumes. Right up until you got to the talented part. All right, gotcha. Go ahead. All right. Where are you going with this? You notice a trend yet? Do I notice a trend? Have you noticed a trend yet for this session? Only cars that are improving are in the left lane. Ones that are going in the 60s are in the left lane, folks. I'm going to tell you I don't think that's going to I think that's coincidental. You're going to tell me what? I think that's coincidental. Do you? Put the car in the right lane and right here. I'm going to tell you, Lyle Barnett came around a corner down there, and the bell on his Pro Charger had fallen down in the hood in the front end. Mm -hmm. It was lodged. So, folks at home, most Pro Charger combinations lose that bell, and it's about anywhere from one and a half to three pounds of boost. Lyle's not backing up now either. Oh, there it is. Honestly, wait, he, the photographer's down there. He's trying to get pictures of Give him a while to it. Okay. Tommy Cunningham in the Mustang over on the left side to now own Stroud Safety Cunningham machine. That's a beautiful 67 Mustang bodied machine with the Hemi on it. And here comes Lyle. Yeah, he opened the door. He's going to wave at the fans. The star of the show, right? He's shaking back. Right? Okay, so you said the left lane is coincidence. Completely coincidence. We'll see if Lyle picks up. Pick, picks the bell. Go 67. Lyle Barnett. Now part of that Scott Tidwell team. Steve Petty. Folks at buyherplants.com jumped on and Lyle's broke. I told you there was something wrong with that car. They're gonna shut Lyle off. So Lyle Barnett will not make this run. Tommy Cunningham gets the single in the Stroud safety machine. goes 372 at 203 miles per hour. Not good enough to improve on his previous run. Tommy Cunningham will stay number 29 at 372 at 203 miles per hour. And for Lyle Barnett, a frustrating, disappointing qualifying session number two at a track that up until today had been really good to him in this car. Yeah, I'm curious what broke. Very curious. We can't see because obviously. Well, if I had a starting line reporter, then yeah, you know, I, know, I might be right? able to get an update. Is somebody supposed to do that? Is that my job description? <laughs> I know. The people that text me and said that the only reason why I was up here in the tower is because they had air conditioning. I want to clue them in on the fact that there is zero <laughs> air conditioning. <laughs> There's no air conditioning. Yeah, I can confirm <laughs> that the sun at this point is now at an angle where it's coming through the window. And yes. I wish the reason Don was up here was because there was air conditioning. Absolutely. Good Lord. Tough. Let's just say Tough if crowd. I was Canadian, I would be a pizza topping right now. You'd be a what? A pizza topping. Come Call on. bacon? All right. I knew Come more North Carolina boys. I always laugh because Randy Weatherford lists Georgia as his home. But all his equipment stays at Carmack's place. So these two, Weatherford and Wilson, they know each other. Their families know each other. Long, long history. Quick eight racing. Randy Weatherford has been around a long time. He has gotten down some sketchy roads. Andy Weatherford and the WS team on the left side. 
Currently qualified 28. Tony Wilson, beautiful. Celebrity Machines Corvette. Not yet qualified. Man, is that a pretty race car. Three sixty-eight one, two hundred and five miles per hour. Score one for the left lane, improving again. This time it's Randy Weatherford. 3.681 moves him all the way up to 15th. For Tony Wilson, a 377 at 204 miles per hour actually goes the wrong direction by four hundredths of a second. So Tony Wilson will enter Friday night under the lights here at Bradenton, not in the show. When he comes up, Randy Weatherford sits 15th right now, will most certainly be part of the field when he comes up for his Friday night run and the next pair set to go here in Bradenton. And it's Eric Latino and Jeff Rudolph, the sheriff, Jeff Rudolph out of Ramsburg, Indiana, the machine they call the ghetto sleigh. Pro charge, pro line machine. Eric Latino, screw charger on top of that race car. Port Perry, Ontario, Canada for the businessman. Jesse, it's G E S I, is Global Emission Services Company, catalytic converters for things like semi trucks, heavy equipment. Also part of the KB Titan ownership team. Headset on. Hey. What? Yes, Randy and Prue. Say what language? Is we we already talked about this. Yeah, you disappeared. Are you struggling there? There's a mute button. There's a what? Exactly. Hey, the mute guy. <laughs> Jeff Rudolph and Eric Latino ready to go. Don't worry about reaction time because you're gonna want to worry about that thing hanging. All right, what happened, to Eric Latino? He gets out of it. And Jeff Rudolph, 3.707. 205 miles per hour. So Rudolph slows it down by 15 thousandths of a second. He will stay number 23. Eric Latino is just on the outside looking in in the 34th spot heading into Friday night. And here comes the man on the bump, Mike Decker to the third. I guess if we're going to put your right lane theory to shame, this would be the moment because Mike Decker's dad went out there and Laid one down early in the session. All right, at home. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they can see these three tents. So what's, so right what's great about this, Don, is we have this thing in front of us. It's called a monitor. Oh, I should pay attention. And it actually shows you what the people at home can see. Son of a gun. Who knew? I just thought that was just like a TV. We were supposed to look at it. Well, it is. It how is. about, just, how about Jason Galvin with some zingers? Who knew it was going to be lunch and a show today? Who knew that? <laughs> Son of a gun. Have the veal. Tip your Listen, waitresses. Hey, fire away. Well, I mean, look, you do open the door with your Canadian bacon jokes from time to time. And well, I don't I, ever I gave you a I don't window. Ever step on it or turn the heat up, window. make you cook a little extra, make it crispy. Gave you a window. Oh. Kevin Rivenbark over here in the left lane. That was okay. The crispy part was okay. Right. Kevin Rivenbark, the second Colt Lumber Shelton Insurance machine that we will see this round. Kevin Rivenbark out of North Carolina. The super sub. As I've started to call him on the NHRA side of things. Like, anytime somebody's got an opening, they call Kevin Rivenbark and he gets in it and goes quicker than it did with whoever the primary was driving. For sure. I, I mean, the Mustangs are really cool. I mean, we got to see a Camaro. It's nice to have some Mustangs. You got Hollywood over there from Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, let's just salvage family business, and here we go. Let's just say Roden Bark's going to go 69. Mike Bark out of the throttle. Mike Decker goes 374.9 at 203. Miles per hour. I'm starting to buy into your right lane. Uh, okay. I'm just saying. I'll let you take a picture. 
It's all right. So what were you trying to tell everybody about the tents? Well, it's fun when the guys come by and you see them vibrate and start to pick up. Mm. And it's just fun. Yeah, everybody at home's going, that's an accident. It's ready to happen. I think it's fun. It's a lot of pressure coming out of the headers. The zoomies. Back pressure. Under pressure. Under pressure. The youngest driver in the history of the World Series of Pro Mod, Preston Tanner, was 23 when he made his debut a year ago in that black Corvette over on the right side of the racetrack. And in the other lane, one of the greatest drivers in the history of Pro Modified door car racing. They call him King Tut, Todd Tuttero, in the quick fuel machine. What do you say, or what can you not say about Todd Pedro when it comes to what he's accomplished? He showed up. This car has got, I think, seven or eight runs on it now. They brought it out, U.S. Street. They just brought another, another car out. They consistently come out each race down here at the start of the year with new cars for new customers, and they just go. He said he missed it. He, he got out of the car down there before we went on air for interview and said, I left something on the table. I'm going to pick it back up later. I don't think this is when he was later. I think later today. A lot of people didn't realize that the track conditions, temperature-wise, that stick for Q1 were similar to last night's final session. We hadn't gotten the heat and the sun, temperature, just the ambient temperature yet, and plus a lot of cars going out there. Now, Preston Tanner is the last car in this session that can bump his way into the field. After this, everybody who comes up is already part of the quick 32. Tanner is 33rd right now on speed. You think he's getting in? I don't mean prediction. <laughs> Eight, 204 miles per hour and Preston Tanner becomes the first car in the right lane to make a sizable improvement on his earlier run and bumps his way not just into the show but all the way up to 18. Todd Tuttero had to get out of the throttle early in that run and abandon it. He'll stand on his earlier 368 with an 8. Preston Tanner's 368 with a 3 puts him number 18. Tuttero gets bumped down to number 22. And Preston Tanner will head into Friday night for now, safely in the show. Four of them separated by four times. Five times. 68 368 with a three is one foul off the bump a year ago. That's why I said for now, he'll feel all right. Yeah, I, after tonight, it, I think uh, 68 would be the safe money at the casino. The ceiling, I think, would be really be like 67. Mid 67. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think the fact that we're giving everybody two hits today instead of one before we get into Friday night. I think, and knowing that tomorrow may not happen, I think you're going to see big slugfest. Person. Well, yeah. I mean, just think about it from this standpoint. If you're 26 or better, and you look down at who's not, mm -hmm. and you start doing the math, then you go, okay, I'm 26. There's 10 people in front of me. So from 26 back, they're going to pick it up, and that's going to win. And you're going to have your guys up front who are going to stroke on out there with the big, big hoss. Like William maybe. Brown the third, Blue Magic 2.0, Jim Halsey, Daddy Shark. That's your, that's your long driver right there. Now starting to the left, gets out of it, and Jim Halsey goes 366 at 207 miles per hour. Jim Halsey picks up two hundredths of a second from his first session. That'll get the Halsey team celebrating with folks out of Cecil County in the number nine position for Halsey, the 3.667. Can you say wow? Say wow. 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 
Paul's a, that's a big move. It's one of the very first ones. Up top. I mean, even further up top. Oh, yeah. 247.6. The stroke rolling. Kenny Lang. I'm the Albillis machine. Blake Housley's yet to move forward. No. Blake, there is no Blake Housley. Blake Housley's yet to be here. No, Blake Housley's not going to make it. So I'm not sure what Blake going to get a solo. So how do you say that? Is that Grande or Grand? Grand, Grand Point Canada. Just Grand? Grand. It's got an E on it. Yeah, it's Grand. It's, it's Canada. Well, I mean, if you're going to go attack the Canadians, I want to make sure nobody's listening. I'm not attacking the Canadians. You're making fun of their, their cities. It's I have. E How's that making fun of it? You asked. I have several Canadian friends, Don. How many do you have? How many do I have? Yeah. I don't think I have any Canadian friends. I don't think you have any Canadian friends. Oh, you, well, you were stopped short. You were getting ready to say, you don't <laughs> think I have any friends. Okay, all right. It's clear the air there. I got at least one. The gal that does my laundry every week, she likes me. <laughs> my therapist says if I keep coming, she can afford that lake house. Uh, I already bought her a car. <laughs> Kenny Lang on the solo shot. Triple ball, 515. Sets the front end back down on that machine. It goes 3.704. 202 miles per hour. So that car slows down quite a bit. Interesting that Eric Latino's car also went the wrong direction a couple of hundredths of a second. They're both Albillas tuned machines. So that tune up just seemed to not really coincide. Maybe, maybe overestimating the heat of the day situation. I don't know. That's Albillas. This is True. the time of day that you can plan on running eliminations. At least one oh, round. Oh, absolutely. So, round, yeah. yeah. So, guys that are already in, they may be wiping that session and looking at it and say, okay, let's find the safe. Where's the line? Here comes Joel Wensley, Brooklyn, Michigan. Camaro on the right side. Currently qualified 27th, and your current number one qualifier not in the current number one qualifier a year ago at this event johnny camp johnny camp 69 camaro had two hundredths of a second on the field at this event a year ago but he's currently 14th made a good run in the first session has been bumped down to the middle of the pack by some of the runs here in this session for that matter joel wensley at one point was middle of the pack is now in what i would call the danger zone 27. oh absolutely 69.9, trying to move them around a little bit. They've lost radio communications with Mr. Winsley. PTP, Patrick Barnhill jumping out there, moving around, giving old school arm signals. But Johnny Camp, okay, this is a team that can just throw down. Just, if you give them enough licks, they're going to find the center of the spot. Johnny Camp, a year ago, when he ran that 362, just about turned this place upside down. I mean, to the point where everybody in the building, I feel like I had to look at the scoreboard and say, does that really say 62? It was so much more impressive than anything we'd seen. And mean? we had seen 38 Pro Mods be within 500ths of a second. Well, that thing's got some real speed down low. Wednesday's out of the throttle. Johnny Camp, 365, 204 miles per hour. Look at that. 923 to 60 feet. And a Pro Charge Pro Modified. And the 365 9 at 204 is low ET of the session by over a hundredth of a second and puts Johnny Camp into the top eight. Yeah, the 244 number is very impressive to the 330. That is very impressive with the heat. That is extremely impressive. Right now. All right. Here comes Sienna's dad. Got to give him more respect than that. What? Can't be Sienna's dad yet. It's going to happen next. Well, I, I 
I mean, we talked about it a few weeks ago. There were snowbirds in the area of test. I told him, I said, Scott, you better get used to playing second fiddle. Mm -hmm. Right? Scott Wild Gust is who we're talking about. That's the Smokies Garage. Clark Construction Newton Powered Machine, the Camaro in the right lane. And the Sienna we are talking about is his 17 year old daughter who stands down there on the starting line behind that race car who will make her NHRA Mission Foods Pro Stock debut at the Gator Nationals one week from today. She will look to become one of the youngest competitors in NHRA professional racing history. She has already obtained her license. She's made a bunch of passes and she's made some pretty good ones. Dave Conley and Ty talked off. And he said he was extremely impressed with how quickly she picked things up, listens, takes criticism, takes suggestions, critiques easy. So he knows where Percy is at age 17 starting. Just imagine if you'd have gotten Eric Andrews at age 17. <laughs> Right. Well, she's well, written would have been crushed. Right. Well, let's not discount old Carolina kid, Travis Harvey, doing double duty this weekend. That Be brand back. new RTM machine for Travis Harvey. Carolina kid. He also made the change over the winter. Used to be a pro charger car. Went to the screw. Out of it, and Scott Wild Gus goes 371 with a 4, 206 miles per hour. Travis Harvey was on a mission, yes. but he had to get out of the throttle because he looked over and realized that signing an autograph on the wall is not my objective. Yeah, now we're doing the fan fest later on, so Travis said he wants to keep all those autographs till later. But uh, absolutely, the car was riding on the wheels and driving itself in that direction. He hung with it at 247. He was going somewhere. Carolina Kid will be part of rival Later on, and here comes Bob Glenn, screw charged Mustang out of Pinellas Park, Florida. Nope, got to jump in, big guy. That's that is your car. only screw right. uh, blower, supercharger on property. Originally, we had no roots cars. And then Bob Glenn was like, hey. Yep, he came back uh, Snowbirds. He was here for World Series Pro Mod last year. They come, they're a great group. I mean, they look good. Uniforms match the car, Mustang. They got out of the car down there and they are just as happy as they could possibly be. And he goes, I got a smidgen more. I'll show you later. Currently number 12 in a really strong run. Out of the gates in qualifying session number one. Meanwhile, Ken Portuccio, who's also started run with the Tidwell folks this year. Over there on the right side of the racetrack, 69 Camaro. Pro charge. And Ken, I'm not sure that the big tire pro mod racing has fully caught on to him like on a national level, at least at the NHRA level. He showed up last year with his 55 that's not really set up to run NHRA races and struggled with it. And I'm not quite sure the NHRA fan understands how good of a racer Ken well, let me explain to you. The Wallace Group built a beautiful 55 show. Tony Wilson was here driving it earlier this week. Bob Glenn shook the tire so hard he knocked the driver's door. 367 for Cortuccio, 204. Yes. He improves in the right lane. Yes, in the right lane. Ken Q was on radios last week. Sure was. Goes from 21st to 12th, a thousandth of a second ahead of Bob Glenn. So he jumps around Glenn's machine, which left chatter marks visible for the first 75 feet of the racetrack. Yeah, you don't have, you don't even need to have 20-20 vision to see those. Mm -hmm. Those are bad. Very bad. That's called uh, attention getters. Right. Here comes Jason Harris and Eric Gustafson. And we are officially into the. Uh, Big Dogs portion of the program here in qualifying session number two based on how Q1 went. Jason Harris, who's 368.7, entered this session looking pretty sporty, sits 21st right now. But Eric Gustafson, 365 with a five, 
was one of the real stars of Q1, and he still sits in the fifth position. Jason Harris got out of the car top end, and he was upset. Now, I'm looking here. He went 68-7. He's still in the field at 21. He was upset. He's like, I cannot believe that we missed it that bad. We wanted to, we wanted to go down. We cannot believe we missed it that bad. But <laughs> Eric Gustin steps out of the car for a few years, comes back, Snowbird, U.S. Street. He's been knocking the tree down, driving over it. I, I, this lard power, which cracks me up every time he brings up an interview. I feel like he's calling me fat. Lard power. Rogue Coast Kong Packing, Kelly's of course, the business out of California. <laughs> they are um, they are in the, this is the, the packing part has to do the, the products of the animals are packing. Couldn't tell from the lard wagon uh, yes. reference. Yeah. But that is a team that is dedicated to pro-modified racing. And they have lions. Jason Lee, we talked about a radio racing last year. Tim Lyons and his whole team, Jason Lee says, I give them a car, they turn it around, they give me the car back, and I go to race. He just contributes all the consistency and preparation to Tim Lyons and his team. So that's good. Number five qualifier on the left way. Gustafson on the run and Jason Harris on a nice looking pass as well. Pair of 365 fives, 20576 for Gustafson and 20513 for Jason Harris. How about Eric Gustafson has run 365.5 at 205.7 on back-to-back -back runs? Yes. I'm, I was elbowing you. Rinse and repeat. See, they they didn't have a camera the in here. The second it left the line, you were elbowing me. Jason I, Harris goes to the number two spot, or number six spot on speed, number two on that run. Impressive side-by-side -side run there, the best side-by-side -side run we've had this weekend for Gustafson and Harris. They sit number five and six, and here comes Jim Widener and the Mississippi Missile. Jason Scruggs, the Mississippi native, the big red machine over on the right side of the racetrack. Jason Scruggs, currently your number 10 qualifier, who showed up on the NHRA scene in the middle of last year and beat the daylights out of everybody a couple races in a row. Well, ask him. He'll tell you. He goes, look, I'm a farmer. I only get off a few weeks out of the year. <laughs> I'm making money. I got a farm. I got all these employees and family. So when I come out here, I'm going to smack you around, make it remarkable, and I'm going to leave. And I'll be back in a few weeks. Jim Widener, meanwhile, over on the left side of the racetrack. Vince Colley, E.P. Fields, Ross Pistons. Now, a little more nitrous. He made, that's personal best. 365-2, personal best, that qualifying run. Down at the top end, he said he and Tony Bischoff brought three engines, and they were going to use them all. I wouldn't use one yet. Well, got a long way to go right now. Long way. Nitrous, widen the machine. So we knocked three thou off the bump since we started. Yes. No. Six thou. Three seventy one one. Three hundreds. Three. Runs out of the throttle early. Widener goes three sixty nine at two oh five. So Widener slows down a couple of hundreds of a second, but a three sixty nine will race plenty good on Sunday in these conditions. Oh, absolutely. If you can go out here and, okay, what he, he slowed up three hundreds, and you figure the track temp picked up 20, 25 degrees. You got ambient tension. Ambient tension, rather, it's got to be in the 80s now. Got to be. Yeah, absolutely. Who would not come out here with the heat and the conditions and say, I go 69, I can win, win on Sunday, win on race day. I just got to get off the start line. I got to leave. I mean, not like leave. I'm not leaving. I mean, leave the start line. Let go of the butt. Drop. Hit it. Where, Get the where, wiggle. Yeah, Get the shake. Where, where do you think you're going? Uh, uh, nowhere, because guess who's coming up? Well, that's why you'd be leaving. I thought maybe you'd go down the starting line. Steve's coming up. I thought you'd go down the starting line and take credit for whatever happened. No. no. Steve King. How about him? Brand new car. Go to number two. 65-0. That, uh, that 
That was one of his best runs of his career. Uh, he might have been on the chip a little bit. We should have had an <laughs> in-car camera for him because he come around the corner and he was happy. 365 for Steve King. Meanwhile, here comes Stevie Fast. That's where I thought you were going. I thought you were going to stand no, behind the car. No, nah. no. Did you take the credit for the 365 eight? Nope. Do you know, okay, there's a lot of things that I can take credit for. That's not it. Steve and I have got a lot of good people over there in the pits. He's over there tuning the car. He's got Jeffrey Barker behind the car, handling the car chief duties. We've got a young crew. Jeff Parker, by the way, not a bad race car driver. In his own I don't know if you know him or not, but, you know, he's a, well, not a, he is the winningest top sportsman driver in NHRA history. And uh, also, U.S. Nationals Pro My Champ. Correct. But the Battle of the Steves right here. By the way, for those watching the flow who have no idea, Donald Neal is standing next to me right now. General Manager. Yes. Of, uh, yep. KTR. KTR. It could be Stevie Fast racing. No, it's KTR. It's KTR. Stevie Fast is holding onto that steering wheel right now, and he's going to get out of the car at the top end and hopefully give it a little fist pump because he has been sniffing horsepower all week. Three sixty-six for Stevie Fast and a three sixty-four for Steve King by six thousandths of a second improvement for Steve King, who stays number two by picking up six thousandths of a second. He couldn't get to Mark Mickey. He ends up two thousandths of a second behind him. But Steve King creeps up on Mark Mickey, and here comes our final pair. Hey, the Salemi group has that up front nasty. For a screw car, that 60 foot was sick. And there's your number one qualifier. All right, we're good. look at that, 932, 244 for Steve King. So let me group, take a bow, my friends. That was impressive in the heat. Kurt Steady. God, I want to drive a car at Tuttle tuning and puts together. So it takes me 28 months to get this car. I've been waiting. Kurt Steading was the runner-up at this event 12 months ago to Spencer Hyde. This is a brand new race car making its debut. He's currently qualified number three. And Mark Mickey in the turbocharged Pro-Line entry. Your number one qualifier is Hart's Turbo. 364.2 at 219 miles per hour. Now, for those of you who are not super familiar with pro-modified style racing, the turbo cars are going to be the top speed. Oh, That's absolutely. where they make all their power. Oh. They are slow to about 150 feet, and they will blow by you on the big end of the racetrack. But for Mark Mickey to be number one, I think opened a lot of eyebrows. Because during testing all week, when the clocks were off, a lot of people were saying, Eye on Mark Mickey, I think he's got something. Well, now it's on the record. Well, they've had something. Snowbirds, U.S. Street. I mean, he's on a run now, three races in a row. He and Turbo and Todd down there. I mean, they're just, you know, they're just killing it. They're just all it. Turbos are killing it. Final pair, qualifying session number two of the World Series of Promo. And what a final pair that is. 359, 220 miles per hour. Mark Mickey is the first car into the 50s here at Bradenton at the World Series at Bromont. 3.598 at 220 miles per hour. And Mark Mickey just gapped the field. Did you really go with gap? Yeah, he did. He did. He definitely got the field. The, what Kurt is Stedding so... goes 365 at 205 and looked like he was standing still. Here's another look. Watch this turbo car charge. He's just moving right there. Once he gets to 330, it's hard to believe this, but Kurt Stedding was ahead quicker 330. And at 330, Mickey drove away. At half track, Kurt Stedding was two. 
hundredths quicker than Mark Mickey. On the back end of the racetrack, Mark Mickey made up almost a tenth of a second. Yes. That is wild. Oh, it's, if you do the incrementals, if you were sitting down, you're a racer, and you sit down and you start going through your logbook and you're doing the splits, you're, you're literally sitting there scratching your head going, how is it feasible to make up that much ground in that time frame? So Mark Mickey. He told me 56 was out there. He said he was going to show it to us. He just showed you 59. Just showed you 59. Mickey Picked up three, the huh? flag on number one for now. Here comes Lizzie Musi, and she's going to be part of this is a, a test pass she's making here. Her and Jeff Lett's going to have a uh, grudge race this weekend. A couple of the No Prep King stars. And uh, Lizzie, it's always great to have Lizzie back behind the wheel of a race car here after her very public battle, ongoing battle. For Lizzie to be here, period, whether she was holding on the steering wheel or not. For Lizzie Musi to be here in life in general, Humanity is a better place with Lizzie Musi hanging around. She's got a lot of tenacity, perseverance, and, and she empowers females. She's out there. She's talking about her battle in cancer. She's trying to to educate. Listen to no it. No time down. on Lizzie Musi. Ooh. Well, it looked pretty sporty on the top end of the racetrack. Ooh. The daughter, the legendary engine man, Pat. Wow. Family's here this week, and obviously Pat's got a bunch of race cars. He's tuning in. Lizzie makes a real strong looking run there. I hear that mug lug down out there as the curves come through. Wow. Getting a little Lizzie Musi. Yep. Jeff Lutz. A little bit of action. Round one grudge match. Tonight. I think they're going to race some tequila now. And you know what that means for me? You're going to go drink some tequila. I don't drink tequila. Oh. Do not. No. Have you seen me drink a tequila? I mean, find out who's supposed to be responsible for me at that time. <laughs> Somebody is in trouble. The El Bandito Yankee machine. Yes. Tampa Bay Race Rentals flying Ryan Ayler's business. It's actually a great deal if you're ever down here in the Tampa Bay, Brayton, and Sarasota area. Flying Ryan's got these machines just up the road, and you and your friends can come out and race these identically prepared Mustangs. The whole program together. So there you like one day, I feel like next year for this race, we should plan this on, like, if we're not testing Monday or something. Oh, yeah, you and me line up? I'd love to drag you from I mean, here more to the than just you and me. We should put like a whole group together, but yeah, I would love to race you. Yeah, I'd drag you, roll the window down, and let you have the business as I'm taking a strike. <laughs> oh, we're, we're bracket racing, though. Oh, yeah, because oh, hey, yeah. look, race car drivers drive both ends That's, of the racetrack. I've got no problem you, with that. You can't, you can't have a starting line and a finish line and just scrub it off because the wind no, line comes I've got out. no problem racing the top end. Absolutely. I'm happy Absolutely. to race. J uh, Jason Logan, I mean Jason Galvin. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna go Thanks for having me up in the booth. I really enjoyed that session of Pro Mod. I hope folks at home on Flow are hanging in there with us. I know we've had some challenges, some technical difficulties, but I can promise you this right now: it is five o'clock Eastern Time. The flag is flying beautifully. Mount Motor Pro Stocks coming up. I'm gonna go get ready. Because Q3 Rivals Night is going to be off the hook. It is. Grab some high noons, get a burger or steak or chicken, steak, steak, steak. and get ready. And Courtney and I will be back to entertain. Jason's going to take you through Mount Motor. Don, I just want to point one thing out. What do I? Notice that we had no technical issues at all when we kept you away from the truck. And you know, the truck is interesting to me. There's like 26 TV screens down there. There's a couple guys down there who've got some sense of humor and some personality. And I really want to do, like, the whole Eli, Peyton Manning thing, like, where there's another feed and we're talking, you know, we're, they're joking and so forth during it. And I think it's a big thing. So I actually sit in the truck and that's what I do. And then they throw me out and I end up here in the booth with you. Probably so power you think they'll lock the door now that they know that I'm coming back? Probably. All right. I'll see you after a while. Don O'Neill, ladies and gentlemen. Here goes Mountain Motor Pro Stock. Qualifying session. Number two, and we're going to kick things off with Dylan Voss and Elijah Morton. Dylan Voss, who uh, knocked the tire off that race car. He's from right here in Florida. In fact, both these drivers are Florida natives. The Voss engines, Voss wheelie bars team over the right side of the racetrack, big yellow car. And Elijah Morton, who uh, now has some stickers on the race car. Cash in fishing rods. The Allen powered car. Elijah came up here for Q1 and got shut off at the end of the burnout after he was late to get up here as the last car. Now, 
Elijah was the last person in the facility this weekend. And I mean, when I say he was the last person in the facility this weekend, he parked his truck at 1030 when we were running at noon, which is part of why he was so late getting up here and also probably, frankly, why they had a little bit of an issue when they got up here and got shut off. So we've not seen Elijah make a run yet. He will make a complete 16 car field here in Mountain Motor Pro Stock. Of course, Mountain Motor Pro Stock is going uh, not quite full time, but having a full season per paying season over on the NHRA side of things it starts in a couple of weeks. Thanks to Jason Johnson, the Johnson's Horsepower Garage folks, who are also, of course, one of our presenting sponsors this weekend at the Drag Illustrated World Series of Pro Mod, presented by JHG and the folks at j &A Services. Jason and Nikki, I don't see them here. I don't know if they're going to make an appearance this weekend, but I know they certainly follow along. We'll send out our best to them, and Elijah Morton just found out the hard way what it's like to have your car hang a left at 100 feet. Gets out of it. Dylan Voss makes a good run. 4.205, 172 miles per hour. Is that 825 cubic inch Cavalier right smack in the middle of the 16 car field in the number eight spot. 16 cars here, 16 will race, so no bumps here in Mountain Motor Pro Stock this weekend. But we do have the Pro 10 5 cars rolling into the staging lanes for their second qualifying session, and those cars do have a bump as we take a look at the last run and watch Elijah Morton in the black machine. Boy, that thing was hanging the left from the second it drop the clutch almost like the wheelie bar was not properly set wheelie bar is so important on tour cars the pro mods the pro stocks the 10 5 cars that are coming up not just for weight transfer but also for steering the car they effectively work as rear steer on these race cars and you know as a crew chief as a tuner of these cars the chassis specialist on these cars that's such an important job you know that when you drop the clutch in a pro stock car or in the Pro Mod car, and you let go of the button, and it stands up on the back tire and hits those wheelie bars, you know kind of how the car squats, how it weight transfers, and you need to set those wheelie bars to be even and help the car stay going straight. If they come down and they're not even, they're off even a quarter of an inch one side to the other, it will do what it just did there for Elijah Morton and turn the wrong direction. Rick Calger, Slick Rick. That's the red car in the left lane and the pro stock debut of Randy Lynn Butner out of Clarksville, Indiana, Bo's wife, or Bo is Randy Lynn's husband. is probably the appropriate way to put that. Hot Rod, Randy's Garage, and all the great stuff she does over there with JBA, the Jim Butner Auto Group. And Randy Lynn is, to call her an established drag racer would be probably not doing her enough service. I mean, Randy Lynn has been a national event winning race car driver a star and stock eliminator. We've seen her jump behind the wheel of dot 90 cars and be competitive as well. But this is her first time in a pro stock machine. She earned her license earlier this week. This is an elite motorsports fielded machine, formerly owned by JR Car, World Championship team. Randy Lynn and Bo both driving cars. It started out with JR Car and are now owned by Elite Motorsports, and sponsored by JHG. Both the cars knock the tires off right at the hip. You saw Randy Lynn. We'll see if we can go back and take a look at this again. You can see Randy Lynn's car when it was lined up on the starting line. They had her lined up way to the left of the group. And there was not a lot of track prep in between Pro Mod and Pro Stock, so it makes you wonder if the Pro Stock teams are maybe hunting for the best contact patch down there on the starting line, trying to avoid Any of the bald spots that started forming. Both those cars continue to coast down the racetrack with the clutch in and the engine off. Daryl Stewart and Dwayne Rice will be the next pair to come up.
So as we get both those cars pushed off the top end, get ready to fire up the next pair with Daryl Stewart and Dwayne Rice. Wayne Rice, Grove City, Ohio. Silver Bullet. The Tasca Parks side of the racetrack. That's the right lane here. They bring the Motorsports Park. Daryl Stewart from the FTI lane. Jupiter, Florida native. The 800 plus cubic inch Chevrolet. Daryl Stewart currently qualified 12th. Dwayne Rice currently in the number 14 position. And you get a good look at the door of the Excalibur Engines team. set as Dwayne Rice bumps in. To the eighth mile shoots out and Dwayne Rice goes 416 with a two at 174 miles per hour. Daryl Stewart goes 415 with a seven at 176 miles per hour. Puts Daryl Stewart five and Dwayne Rice seven. Believe it or not, these two cars just ran within five thousandths of a second and found a way to sandwich Johnny Placino in the middle. Stewart to five, Rice to seven, Placino sits sixth, everybody's chasing. Bo Butner, the only car in the four O's at this point. And here comes Matt Giagrand and Kurt Nader. North Carolina for Giagrand, Ohio for Nader. And that is Mustang over the right side of the racetrack. Red, white, and blue adorned on the hood. Nader ran a 466 at only 167 miles per hour in the first session. Good enough for 13th right now, and Matt Giagrand sits number nine. A little help from the folks at Ram Clutches. The Lenko Transmission folks. One of a half dozen cars in this field. John Case race engine under the hood. Bump spot shows up on the scoreboard as a 7.308, but there are only 16 cars on the property. side of the car 13.6 liters under what 820 cubic inches converts into on a Cobra Jet Mustang Run 
one up in the air, and he goes 426, 172. I Meanwhile, Matt Giagran made a really nice run. 415, 4, 175, he picks up 100 or so. And that's going to move Matt up all the way to the number five spot. A hundredth of a second for Matt Giagran was good for four spots on the run order. Kurt Neighbor moves up to the number 12 spot with his 4.263 and 172 miles per hour. And here comes Tony Gill and Johnny P. Johnny Puccino. Feather Light Batteries, Johnny Placino. Folks at Feather Light contributing to the number one qualifier bonus this weekend in Mountain Motor Pro Stock, which is worth $1,500. And if you're just joining us here on Flow Racing, again, this is qualifying session number two. There's a third session tonight, so if you look at the original schedule, I haven't seen the updated one that came out last night. A third qualifying session was added for all three heads up categories. Tomah, Mountain Motor Pro Stock, and the 10-5 cars who are still to come for Q2. They were added as the weather forecast for tomorrow continues to go back and forth between looking promising and, well, frustrating. plan at this point is to try to run two qualifying sessions tomorrow, but if Mother Nature doesn't allow that for whatever reason, at least everybody's had three shots at it today. Gillick, the flat-out gaskets, Pontiac, Chino, the feather light. You know, had to battle that one back. It's still in 414. How about that? 411, Tony Gillick. 411 with a 5 at 177. Tony Gillick. Moves all the way up to number two. Johnny Placino improves to a 414 at 176, and that thing was not happy off the starting line, to say the least. Johnny Placino had to do a driving job to keep it off the wall, get it pointed straight again, get through the gears, and still find a way to improve. Now the Mountain Motor Field, much like Pro Mod, tightening up. And here comes Tony Pontieri and Derek Reese. Black and red Mustang of Reese out of Ohio. And Pontieri, another one of the Canadian competitors here this weekend. Bolton, Ontario is home. Quality Plus compressors, Bears performance. Also has a case power plant under the hood. Second, separate these two cars.
number five qualifier. Tony Pontier. White, black, and red Camaro. Darren Reese, black and red Mustang, and almost identical runs for those two cars. Clutch dropped front end, hiked tails of flag. Clutches went right back in. Pontieri coast across to a 542. Derek Reese follows at a 736. They will stay fifth and 12th. Let's take another look at the last run between those two. Reese's car almost immediately started doing the sachet. Ontario's car made a little bit more of a move over towards the wall before he had to shut the clutch back in as well. Scott Benham and John Montecalvo, the reigning event champion. Scott Benham, Magnolia, Texas. Beautiful shot. Low racing drone. High above the track here at Raymond Motorsports Park. Scott Flying the flag for his native state of Texas. Meanwhile, looking at the door of John Montecalvo. That is beautiful. Bald Eagle and Old Corey on the hood of that race car. John Montecalvo, who won this event one year ago. John Montecalvo said it in the first qualifying session, but if you were to start talking about the greatest drivers in the history of Mountain Motor Pro Stock, many names come to mind before John Montecalvo? Perhaps none. Added to his resume, taking home the $25,000 a year ago. Back to the Fenders Championship. And goes 411 at 177 miles per hour to improve. Scott Benham goes 415 at 175. They both improve by a little more than a hundredth of a second. For Montecalvo, he goes to the number three spot. And here's your final pair. Maitland, Florida's Allen Drinkwater. Drinkwater, a PDRA race winning pro stock driver, a Drag Illustrated 30 under 30 member. PDRA Extreme Pro Stock champion. Last year in his rookie year. They're moving up in the ranks. Driving an 04 Ford Escort of all of it. Here they come. Alan Drinkwater, PDRA champion, 
and Bo Butner, 2017 NHRA Pro Stock World Champion. Bo's won pretty much anything there is to win behind the wheel of a race car. From the fling, the U.S. Nationals in Super Gas, the world title in Comp Eliminator and Pro Stock. And now will be the flagship machine for the folks at Elite Motorsports and JHG in the Johnson's Horsepowered Garage Mountain Motor Pro Stock class in 2024. Relationship that Bo and Jason and Nikki Johnson have formed. Led the JHG's support of so many different facets of racing. This event, one of the presenting sponsors, World Series of Promont, the Pro Superstar Shootout, Mountain Motor Pro Stock Class, sponsorship of Bo's program, now Tony Stewart, Matt Hagen's program. Bo right now the only mountain motor car in the 4 0 4095 sits number one. Alan Drinkwater currently qualified fourth. Final pair, Q2, Mountain Motor Pro Stock. Coming into your living room. Butner's got to do some driving. And a 409 at 177 miles per hour. Bo Butner by one thousandth of a second picks up an improvement. Alan Drinkwater squared the tire and had to get out of it. But Bo Butner, you saw it right there on the Flow Racing Drone, drives his way further ahead of everybody else with a 409-4. Bo knows. Bo showed up. Bo has made a statement. Second qualifying session for Mountain Motor Pro Stock. Locked away for the day. They will have one final session coming up this evening. And coming up after the El Bandito Yankee Tequila Drudge Race. Qualifying session number two for the Pro 10-5 class. 10.5 cars in the staging lanes getting ready to go. We have 24 cars and only 16 spots as those cars get ready to race for $25,000 here at the fifth annual Drag Illustrated World Series of Pro Mod presented by JNA Services and Johnson's Horse Powered Garage. Qualifying session number two for the first ever Pro 10-5 Challenge coming your way next.